everyone. Thanks for pressing play. You are watching a brand new episode of Talking Comics Excalibur CCG TV, where every week we come together to tell you about the great comics that are hitting the shelf. We are talking about the week of December 14th. Hello, I am Chris. I am Randy. We are Excalibur Comics Cars and Games here in Shreveport, Louisiana, as well as in Texarkana, Texas. You can always find out what's going on with us by going to our website, ExcaliburCCG.com. Uh, following our Facebook page or following our Twitter page. The links are in the description down below. Thank you to all of our new subscribers. Thank you for our community. It's slowly but surely expanding. And we really appreciate you being a part of this community and, and being a solid YouTube community because I cannot tell you how much I appreciate the comments that we get. And there's like no trolls. There's no... You know, you know, just off the wall random crap that happens in the comment section. We actually have discussions and talk about things, and I, for one, am greatly, greatly appreciative of that. So, guys, this week, uh, December, I don't know, man, so December does seem kind of like, like a slow month so far, but we do have some things to cover. We do have several different things to cover, some things you might have, not, uh, you might have missed like I did until Randy reminded me. But uh, we got several great things that we're going to be covering in this episode. You ready to dive in, bro? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, guys. Let's start with our new number ones. Several of them coming this week, uh, <clears throat> plus some 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 different things. But let's start it off with <laughs> one of the big titles, especially Marvel is pushing this as a as a big title uh, for this particular character. But we get a brand new Hawkeye number one dropping this week by Kelly Thompson and Leonardo Romero. And guys, this is not Clint Barton Hawkeye. This is Kate Bishop Hawkeye. Marvel thinks your favorite Hawkeye. So here we go, guys. Maybe that is your favorite Hawkeye. Here we go with this. We get to see her in L.A. becoming L.A.'s newest guardian angel. So, guys, if you're a fan of Kate Bishop as Hawkeye, she is taking over the Hawkeye series with this number one issue starting this week. It is an ongoing. Check it out and have fun with that. Kelly Thompson needs to bring her a game. Because right now I don't feel like she's brought in a game to Marvel with the books she's written, which have been what so far. I know, I know the name. A, a Force was one of them, okay. and she wrote something else. And it's been a little lackluster, especially when you're following on the footsteps of uh, uh, G. Willow Wilson. She didn't do uh, Mockingbird, did she? That was, was that someone no, else, Kate Leth? Or? I, I don't remember, but okay. uh, I don't think it was her. Okay. Uh, but I, I just, she needs to be more dynamic. You heard it. Just just saying that. You uh, heard it right here. If you if you are going to take a, a character who is a fan favorite for people, yep. then she needs to be dynamic because A-Force started off really strong mm -hmm. with Will, uh, Wilson's first uh, story arc. And then when she uh, Thompson jumped on board to take the ideas and actually write the story on paper, the, the it fell fast. Yep. Because uh, I mean that book canceled. That's that's one of those things that I would not imagine it with how strong it started off. Um, yep. hey, anyways, that's that's just uh, I'm telling her she wants to, to do well. She needs to bring her a game to that. Exactly. Uh, we also have a fun one for you guys because uh, Marvel is in the Christmas spirit and they are giving us Gwenpool. Or Gwen Pool's holiday special Mary mix up. With this, you're taking a look at a Christmas special that features Gwen Pool, who I guess I, I don't read anything Gwen Pool related. <laughs> yeah, they they, they said Marvel's favorite Gwen. Yeah. Uh, parentheses, sorry, Stacy. So is this not a Gwen Stacy from another uh, realm? Uh, I, I thought it was. If it's not one, <laughs> but it features Gwen Pool, Spider Man. Red Skull, oh, Punisher, and Deadpool. That's a, an interesting mix there. Uh, they're trying to figure out why this year's festivity... Fe, uh, fe, 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 fe. <laughs> wow, I think I found a word I can't say. <laughs> Festivities fill off this year. Okay. So we'll figure out why, I guess, once we read that. Very cool. Maybe Very cool. get a Santa Claus appearance in there, too. I mean, I, I, st I still the miss mutant. the uh, specials and the annuals and stuff they used to do that... The mutant Santa Claus? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, he uh, was a mutant. Omega level. Yeah. 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 We haven't seen that fun in a long time. That'd be cool to see. I hope, maybe they throw that in. We'll see there. It's like... So guys, another one, probably probably like the strangest team up yeah, that course. you that you've never thought you would ever see is happening starting this week. Yeah. Here we go, guys. Doctor Strange and Punisher 
Magic Bullets number one drops this week by John Barber and, and uh, Andrea Bacardo. Guys, apparently there is a mafia threat so big that the Punisher has to team up with Doctor Strange to take it out and find find out what it is and to take it out. So apparently, apparently the mafia has gotten a hold of something magical and it's way above and beyond what Punisher's used to. But he knows the guy. He knows the guy. He knows the guy. So that's what's happened this week, guys. Four issue miniseries. Four issue dropping this week. Have fun with it. He knows the guy. <laughs> <laughs> with the guy. God, have fun with that. What's up for you, Randy? Uh, DC is not going to be outdone by no. Marvel bringing all the cheerful festivities for the holiday season. They are giving us the DC Rebirth holiday special. Right. And with this, we're taking a look at multiple different ways to spend your holiday season. One might be Huntress Hanukkah, which, as I was just talking to Chris beforehand, very confusing to me because Bertinelli, who was, you know, involved with the Sicilian crime family, Catholic all about, especially in the costume, apparently is no more. And somehow, even though she is the granddaughter of this Sicilian mob boss, is Jewish now. Don't know where it came from, but it's there. She's having her cheerful Hanukkah. Uh, we're taking a look at Flash with his Christmas. Okay. And maybe the funnest one of all that just makes sense, Constantine's Pagan Party. <laughs> it makes sense. Plus, we're going to get to see some Detective Chimp in this book. Detective Chimp? Yeah. Really? It's been a while. Man, you think there might, you think there might be missing an opportunity here with this whole rebirth holiday special? I think fans are really clamoring for some more hints and clues as to... What's going on with the whole overarching rebirth storyline? Well, they've already given hints that they're going to discuss a couple of those things or, or throughout 2017. Yeah, okay. So they, they've at least said, hey, there, there are two or three things we will get to and cover. Okay. So, so just have fun with this They're building to it. Yeah, very cool. Have fun with that one, guys. There we go. Guys, last one for the new number ones that we're covering this week. I don't know if I've ever seen this before. I don't know if he's ever had his own series. Okay, he's out of one shot. Maybe, yeah. 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 Guys, all of you Transformers fans, <laughs> Optimus Prime number one from IDW drops this week his own series, ongoing That's series, cool. uh, as far as I know. So, guys, John Barber again, working man there, and uh, Kai Zama teaming up to give us Optimus Prime number one. Revolution is over, but the danger to Earth is still happening. Optimus Prime now has apparently has a larger target painted on his back and doesn't help matters whenever there's an alien incursion that starts and a corkscrew-shaped craft starts drilling into the Earth. Crazy. So, guys, there we go. All of you uh, Transformers fans, especially Optimus Prime fans, I hope you really dig this and hope, hope you have fun with this brand new number one from IDW this week. Guys, storylines. Uh, at first, I was like, man, we really don't have any storylines. But then my man Randy showed up. He was like, hey. You missed this, and you missed this, and you missed this. <laughs> but guys, sorry about that. But let's dive in, because we do have some storylines that are mainly starting this week and continuing. But guys, the big one for this week, Inhumans versus X-Men, number one. The actual number one. We got Charles Soule, Jeff Lemire, and Francis Yu on board to tell this story. This is a six-issue six issues. Uh, miniseries here happening. I think there's, I don't know if Francis Yu is doing all the art. Uh, I thought that he was, but there may be some other artists that join in here. Well, it says all drawn, so I don't know if it's just this issue. This issue's all drawn. Oh, you're right, exactly. Or right. <laughs> if it's the whole series. <laughs> There's a whole communication gap there, right there, guys. But guys, they've been on a collision course now for several months. Now it's happening. The Terrigen Mist has been causing the sickness and the death of mutants. The Beast discovers that the mutants have only two weeks before the planet is uninhabitable for them. Mm -hmm and that this inhuman and mutant war is unavoidable. Find out what happens with this in this first issue dropping this week. Let's see. Let's find out what the repercussions are going to be. Also, guys, we do have a clone conspiracy tie-in this week with Silk, number 15, dropping this week. Dead No More, the clone conspiracy. All you need to know is that Silk faces off against a Spider-Woman. Uh, Which one? We'll find out with this uh, week. But, guys... If you've been reading The Clone Conspiracy, I'm behind on it. Let me know what you think, especially with the big That's reveal sad. that we got uh, from last week. Uh, let us know what you think about that. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll give you a hint. As to the A-Spider-Woman? As to the A-Spider-Woman. It is the Spider-Woman that could not be used in the uh, Jessica Jones TV series. 
and they had to replay or, or readjust the story. You know, if if you read Alias, you'll know exactly who the Spider Woman is. Nice. If you didn't, you may need to go do some research and see, or pick up Silk Number Fifteen. I would suggest a vote. <laughs> Just me. <laughs> there we go, guys. What's up for you, Randy? Oh, uh, Suicide Squad Number Eight's one you want to pick up because even though this is the end of a story arc, within this uh, issue. They're taking a look at a backup story about Killer Frost. And uh, Killer Frost, this story arc, uh, involves her with her first day at Bell Reeve, but it goes directly into the whole Justice League versus Suicide Squad number one. So if you're wanting to pick up everything or see where the story begins with the character, you'll want to get this one. Cool. Very cool. That's going to be a huge DC storyline. It should be. It's going to, yeah. So, guys, there we go. Those are our storylines for this week. Have fun with those. You know what time it is. Now it's time for our favorites, some of our favorite comics, the, the first comics that we will read from the top of our stack of books that we take home. Randy, what's at the top of your stack? Uh, I've got Wonder Woman number 12. Uh, with that one, this is part five of year one. This okay. is taking a look at the uh, first landing on the American soil with one woman, and this is her first facing off with uh, the nemesis, you know, her her original big bad villain that she, I guess, is is going to to uh, what what would it be? It's the building the blocks of the legacy. Okay, for that, so cool. something big there. Uh, then we're also taking a look at Descender number 17. This is a new story arc, guys. With this one, it's called Orbital, Orbital Mechanics. You have Tim, Tesla, and Quan are on the uh, machine moon. They're trying to get off right now because there are a whole lot of other hunting parties that are trying to converge on the moon looking for Tim 21. Cool. Great stuff. Hey, speaking of Wonder Woman, I don't, for all of you guys on that follow other channels on YouTube, uh, the channel uh, Bat in the Sun, who does those superhero beatdowns. Yeah, they I just saw did that. a recent one with Wolverine versus Wonder Woman. So many problems with that, but that it, may be it true. looked cool. It it looked top line. I mean, it looked it, like it movie looked, quality. It was well, super good. I mean, Wolverine looked kind of silly to me. It, that could have been better. And and he talked horribly. I talk, <laughs> what? It sounded like the <laughs> no. It just he he said these. I don't know. There's always it, one liner. Let's, uh, it was, let's play a game I call Just the Tip. It was, <laughs> it was silly. But to me, Wolverine is a guy who is trained in how many different martial arts, and he didn't fight like that at all. No, man. The Berserker Rage I took still over. don't care. Yeah. Still don't <laughs> care. Uh, but it looked really, it looked, it looked fantastic. Uh, it, and, and, I, I was a bit surprised by the winner, but then not surprised by yeah, the winner. I'm as more well. I'm more of a Wonder Woman fan than a Wolverine fan. Sure. But I felt like the person people that created it probably were too. Oh. And they did not Well, they pulled the fans. Well, well they also just didn't really I guess understand Wolverine. It, it, it seemed like a DC person writing Wolverine's perspective is what it seemed like. Okay. So, you know, I don't know. I, I just, to me, there were some issues with it. And it was weird because I'm a total Wol uh, Wonder Woman all the time over Wolverine. Right, right. <laughs> Check it out, guys. It, 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 was, it was fun. fun. It, 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 was it was really, really fun. It was fun. Especially some of the one-liners and stuff before he gets to the mascara. I, I had fun with that. But, guys. Oh, is that where he got to? Yeah, that's where he faced her. Oh, okay. Cyclops says, "Have you heard about? Have you heard of a place called?" Oh, I, I'm a, I just saw the battle between. Oh, the two okay. Of them, no, so. there was like a little. Okay, I didn't see all that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So cool. yeah, have... I'll have to go watch the full thing then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's worth it. It's worth it. And I'm just, I was just amazed. I haven't watched one of those in a long time. Yeah. And I was just amazed at the quality of the all of it, the cinematography, yeah. the special effects. Like, dang, the fighting was really cool. Yeah, the effects were really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely top notch. So guys, uh, some of my favorites hitting this week. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows number two drops this week. Really dug the first issue. Can't wait to get even more of this. But we can take a look at the Mole Man attacking New York <laughs> City and the Spider Family fighting against him. And then also, guys, we get to uh, hopefully we can take it up a notch with this issue, Reborn number three dropping this week. Because in this issue, it looks like we're going to get to find out what some of uh, 
Bonnie's warrior uh, powers are that are supposed to kick in with her being a part of this afterlife realm uh, that they're in. So, yeah, and Greg Capullo on art, yes, 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 I'm totally there. Have you had the uh, issues with the book that other people apparently have had? And it's pretty noticeable when you, when you look at it. No. That she goes to this realm, and suddenly her father's like this really good looking guy who she's always like cozying up to, and all the images. It was kind of disturbing. <laughs> like, like, a lot of people were pointing this out, and I was like, they're not wrong. I was kind of thinking that myself when I was flipping through looking at it. It's It was a little just. Dis- uh, yeah. Disturbing. Yeah, it's a little disturbing. Uh, the, the 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 main thing I'm tr- I'm trying to figure out is you know everybody's everybody's connected to her in this. In some uh, way. yeah. Uh, so you got you got the, you got the bad guys, Lord Golgotha, and then then it was like, so who oh, was he God. in her previous life? You know, because one of his henchmen was a cat that they neutered, so the cat <laughs> character hates her. <laughs> <laughs> but guys. Uh, it really, really I'm digging this so far, and I finally got a chance to read Empress number seven, the final issue of that. Uh, of that story arc? Of that story arc, yes. Yeah. So there we go. That was, that was an interesting end to that with so much more to come. So, guys, you know what time it is. Time for our pick of the week, Randy. Randy, it's the time for our pick of the week. Pick of the week. Randy. Out of all this stuff that we've discussed, or it could be something else that's on your list, you can only leave the comic shop with one new comic book. What is the one comic book you will not leave the shop without this week, Randy? I have a very small list this week. I do, I do too. <laughs> I do too. It's just a ton of stuff. But uh, I'm, I'm probably going to go with uh, Wonder Woman number 12. I've been enjoying the series. So yeah. Um, probably that. You've been able to keep up with the dual storylines? And- I have. It's been a little slow going. Yeah. I think it, it, the, the pacing would be much better. Uh, but it's still a good story yeah. uh, because it's coming out so frequently. You're yeah. basically getting a story, uh, two different stories a month. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's not too slow. If it was once a month and they were alternating like that, that would be a lot worse. That's, yeah, yeah, that's cool. For me, <laughs> you know, I, I just enjoy the fun of it. So I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Renew Your Vows number two. Spider-Man, yeah. Spider-Man Renew Your Vows number yeah. two. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm digging that. I, like, I really like the first issue. And I'm really happy that Marvel is doing this. So, yes, that, that's that, that's the pick of the week for me. That's the one I will not leave the shop without. Cool. Now, are you ready? Uh, before we get to a question of the week. Okay. I got to tell you here. Uh, after looking at Motor Crush number one. Yes, let's talk about that for a moment. I haven't read it yet. I so. I don't have any issue with supporting books that are good books, but I, I don't support a book just because it has something in it can be a, a crummy book. I'm not calling this book crummy, but guys, they they left out a very big thing that I think is uh, if if you want to go with this whole thing that. Uh, a black female lead cannot be support a book, and they're giving us a black female lead. Do not give us a black female lead with a drug addiction problem. That was that was a bit of a kick in the pants when I saw that. Bit on the nose there. Wow. No, just that. That's that's too. Uh, that, there's some. I think there's some stereotyping or something. That's, there, there's something going on there. You don't need to do that. That's that's. Especially Based, by white creators. By white creators. That that right there was that right there was one of those things that was like, come on now, Dave. That you did was that necessary? Yeah. Um and, and you could have given any sort of other uh I don't want to say crutch obstacle that this person has to go through, but you give them a drug addiction. Yeah, I mean, because that, that is what the that's what the book, book focuses I on. I didn't. Right? No, I didn't. I thought that that was maybe like some sort of chemical compound you put into the vehicle, okay, or something like that, right. okay, or or what? I didn't realize it's it's just like a drug. Is it a drug that enhances her racing in some way? Or? I that I think still kind of remains to be okay. seen for me. I, I don't know because I'm behind that. on reading so much stuff. I didn't get a chance yeah. to read that. So, but yeah, so. So that right there was one of those things where it's like, whoa, hold on. Come on. Give give me a better story than that. So so it does, So compared to our question of the week last last week, if I'm not mistaken, where we talked about this and and there was an issue because retailers were stating that they weren't ordering the book, 
Supposedly. Supposedly, retailers were saying that they weren't ordering the book because they, they weren't racist, but a black female lead comic would not sell in their shop. The customers would simply would not buy it. Yeah, and that was being said, called racist. That was being called racist, so now we have the additional layer here of it being a black female lead for this book, and she's addicted to drugs. Yeah, that that was a, a kick in the pants. There, okay, there we go. <laughs> I, I, I mean, maybe it's better than it looks, or there's more to it than it looks, but that did not support a case very much so there. Because, I mean, right. just with... Right, to go buy this book. With and, what yeah. people <clears throat> who want to attack certain sides will latch on to. Exactly. That was something that you maybe wanted to steer clear of. Um, I'm just saying. I understand, Randy. Just saying. But the struggle is real. So, going with that, <laughs> I promise you guys, this is going to be the last time. <laughs> he loves it. I'm having ulcers because of it. Uh, I can be a bit too much gasoline on the fire at times. But guys, speaking of gasoline <laughs> on the fire, the question of the week this week. Actually, I can't. we can't take credit for this question. This was actually posed by comics professional Matt Hawkins, Matt Hawkins. who writes uh, several different books at Top Count Image Comics, Postal, The Tide, uh, The Think Tank, uh, several, several different creator-owned titles that he has there. But he posed a question this past week to comics professionals. Uh, just in general, wanting to find out how much do you, uh, he says, comic pros, how much do you concern yourself with whether your religious or political views might stop people from buying your work? Put it out there. Uh, so, uh, some other creators uh, chimed in, and then other non creators and people in general with things they had to say chipped in, and it kind of was a big, a big thing. But my, our question to you this week is simply this How much do a creator's professional, uh, a co- professional comic creator's uh, political views or religious religious views affect their work to you? Does it put you in a place where you won't buy it? Do you ignore it? Uh, what do you think about that? H- how much does a professional comic creator's religious or political views affect their work to you? Is the question, Randy? You want to start this off? Uh, sure, I'll start this off. I. Uh, I know, right? For uh, for the most part, when it comes to the religious views of a creator, because you could take someone like Bendis that is Jewish, and Bendis really works. You know, he, he works with Kitty Pride, and he works that with you know he loves to, to use the Jewish characters and, and work with that. And I really don't have an issue with that uh, because there are some cool characters like Kitty Pride that get better developed. And uh, just become more all around uh, com- comparable. You can compare yourself to them or relatable characters. Sure. Uh, and so I like that. Now, outside of the comics, I really don't care what their view is. You know, it's it, to me. I'm always thinking like, or what they're taking from it and putting into the comic. Uh, Political, I've told you, I I, uh, I am much more of a social person, and I like to see the development of more well-rounded um, representation of different types of characters, where they're not all just cookie-cutter style characters. And so, picking up, uh, I mean, I go through and the type of books I pick up oftentimes deal with a lot of the different types of characters. Uh, uh, I'm going to use a word that people are going to instantly not like where I'm going to say deviancy but by deviancy I mean th- this is what the norm has been for so long okay. and by deviancy I mean it, it, it does not follow along the norm I'm not saying it's bad that's okay. not what deviancy means uh, it just deviates from what the, uh, the norm has been for decades and decades okay. uh, kind of thing and so I like I like that. Um, I just like it when it's natural. And so I, I feel like a lot of comic creators right now feel they have to be the voice for something else that's out there. Good point. And to me, it'd be one of those things where why don't you step down and let the other people who are what you're fighting for take your place and speak for themselves with the writing if 
they are out there saying, hey, we can do it too, rather than you being the person to step up. So uh, I, if, if they're not willing to step down and let someone then, then let's remove it from the comics because I don't necessarily want uh, the comics to just be laden with this. I, I like the representation of characters that then develop into a story, but it doesn't need to be focused on their lives that are parallel to uh, uh, current events kind of things. I, I hope that makes some sense. No. Okay. No. What, what about yourself? Uh, I, For the most part, I forcefully ignore it. Forcefully. Or or just just you know, ignore it in general. Because I know some of my favorite some of my favorite creators like Warren Ellis. Right. I mean I, I he's far left. Right. You know, he he's 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 very uh, non religious right, a religious right. and political views are definitely different. Uh, right. A lot of them are from me, but I enjoy his work. Right. And honestly I, honestly I want I want to be able to appreciate the work on just the merits of the work. Yeah. Uh, if there's if there's some if there's something if there's something else thrown in that I agree with or whatever whether it's religious in, in a religious sense or political sense then then bonus for me you know but I, I want a concept in, in the work that I that I latch on to that's relatable right. for me that can be relatable to so many other people and I don't want I don't want you preaching me to me about politics or or religion in my comics for the most part right I do appreciate when a political stance or a religious stance or view does inform a character's development and right. background and stuff. <coughs> uh, like, like, don't Daredevil will never be Daredevil will never be Jewish to me. He's a Catholic character. Right. He's a, he's raised that way. That's that that is a, a huge part of the character himself. Uh, <clears throat> Midnighter is gay. Right. That's the character. Don't don't mess with that. That's right. who he is. Don't mess with that. <clears throat> Tell me great stories. Within and, his and confines. Let me speaking of Midnighter, I really this is gonna sound weird. I really appreciate what they did in the Midnighter Apollo book, okay. where within the first issue, they are there and they just like are ripping the clothes off each other and, and they're 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 you know, it's one of those things where apparently it's okay to have a male and a female character in the comic book doing that. And you, you never bat an eye. But here's a character, like you said, that's been established that is, is, you know, has been gay throughout the inception of the character. Exactly. It was laid out there. Warren Ellis had the the makings for it. People just didn't look. And so to, to have something where they're like ripping the shirt off and, you know, falling onto the bed, which happens all the time with male-female characters. I, th- I was like, you know what? I, that's, that's cool that they show something like that. And they, they it's like, don't even bat an eye because... It would. I mean, why wouldn't you have? Why could you not have something like that in that book, where you can have something like that in this book with uh, different sex characters? Well, yeah, that's a good point. I, mean, I, I just like. I, I you know I don't want if, if like if in the case of the men or, or in the case of uh, the two examples I gave Daredevil. Yeah. Don't give me just like a, a, a Roman Catholic comic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, uh, don't give me just a, a gay comic with, with Midnighter. You're right. I, I, those are understood uh, well, principles yeah. of the characters. Yeah. Tell me tell me tell me a great story, a struggle that they're facing and and don't take away from their history, from right. their development. Right. That, well I'm just saying you'd see that all the time it. with Dick Grayson and fill in the blank female. Right. You right. see that all the time. Yeah. And so it's like, well, they they shy away like we can't do this, and it's like it's not something. It's a PG thirteen thing at most that you're doing there, uh, you know, or PG even. You know, they took a shirt off, and now they're you know laying in bed the next morning and sipping coffee or something. That, it happens, and you know, it's it's silly. But I, I can see what you're saying, and it's one of those things where I think people like Ed Brubaker, he puts. Uh, you know, I think he writes stories more along the lines of stuff that he's interested in talking about. Mm-hmm. And if you read his letters page, that's where he can kind of, you know, stuff can get more into what his viewpoint is. Same for Rucka. Uh, no. I, I think... When the letters page is like... The, the, the letters page is. Yeah. Uh, but the thing I was going to say is that with Rucka, well, with Rucka, he was going to be one of my examples, is that he's a pretty outspoken person mm-hmm. publicly. Okay. And, you know, much like Mark Wade is a person that's very outspoken publicly right. with things. But you don't see a whole lot of uh, uh, 
Twitter rants and things from uh, Ed Brubaker with no. stuff. I, I, and he's probably just so busy with everything he's doing, he doesn't have time to stop and do that. <laughs> but he may, just, he may just say, hey, look, I'm just not going to get into it or, or yeah. something like that. But uh, it's always interesting to see that. Uh, and, and it's one of those with, like, Mark Wade, where there may be some things that I disagree with with him uh, on one spectrum. He doesn't bring it to his comics, and he always, uh, you know, he, he just writes dynamic comics, and and so that's something I can appreciate. And and yeah, I'm not. I mean, there would be it would have to be something pretty extreme that you know this guy has come out as uh, being a neo-Nazi who you know has his his Hitler collection. That might stop me from reading someone's material. Uh, because that's that's a pretty extreme thing that it's like that dude that that is not an okay <laughs> realm that you're getting into right there. Uh, so there there are some things where I think I would draw the line, but when it comes to what people's political views or or religious views are, uh, if they work it into the comics and the, it just doesn't feel like they're they're doing the Oliver Stone thing of just like beating you over the head with their viewpoint and like trying to go this is how you have to feel uh, exactly. then uh, uh, then I'm cool with it you know they put it in there let it tell its story and hopefully it works out or just leave it out and you can go to Twitter and I'm not going to go read anything on Twitter because I don't do Twitter right so, <laughs> so I won't know about it until you come in and tell me or you know <laughs> Yeah, but for myself, I, I for the majority of it, I ignore. I just ignore. I, and you had a good point because with the like, you know, if something somebody does something that's considered extreme, like a neo Nazi or something something like that, you know, uh, one one comic series that we know that kind of suffered f for something that did happen with one of the creators was Rat Queens. Yeah. Whenever the artist was alleged allegedly uh, a, an abusive person to his wife or ex wife, and that really affected things and it, it shook everything up for that comic yeah uh oh, that which is coming back yeah but, but yeah, yeah that it, comic was shook to the core exactly it messed it messed everything up but for the most part for me i i i have an understanding that that most uh comics professionals aren't the same beliefs as i am religiously or politically so i have to i have to look past all of that and I want to. I want a great character. I want a great concept, and I want a great story that right. everybody can relate to. Because I, I just ignore the, the vast majority of it. I do ignore. There are some things that I'm cool with, but vast majority I do ignore. So, yeah, that's, uh, that, yeah, that's the question, guys. The, the main thing I would say is that if comic creators are going to talk online, especially if they're going to have opposing views online, I, I would hope that they could have like like you said within our uh within our youtube channel that when we talk we discuss i would hope that they could have a discussion without it turning dirty and it it just too often doesn't yeah it, and it I, too often just you know someone feels the need to call out another person for for whatever reason there and yeah uh, i i just wish it didn't do that because it you know, always devolves you you you're reading like 150 characters that a person's having to force something into <laughs> and so there's a lot where you can go well that must mean this you know and you, you don't know exactly and, and, and matt hawkins who presented this question is he's like he's an atheist but yeah. i i picked up and, and read uh tithe for the longest time yeah. uh, several issues of that i was reading postal as well which didn't have anything to do with religion or politics per se uh, so, so I mean, I mean that's just an example. Ooh, yay me! I'm patting myself on the back here. But I mean, I'm just saying, the concept was cool to me. Right. I wanted to read the concept and the, sto and the story. Uh, so see, th th those are just some examples. So guys and gals, tell us in the comments below how much does a professional comic creator's political or religious views affect their work to you? Does it mean you buy it? Does it mean you don't buy it? Do you ignore it? Tell us in the comments below. Let's have a discussion about it. Keep up the great work like you guys have been doing in the discussion and in the comments down below with discussion. 
That's it for this week, man. We could go on and on. With yeah. This, but it's time to wrap it up. Yeah. Anything else to add, sir? Uh, guys, I will see you at the beginning of the new year. Uh, I'm going to drink lots of beer in Germany and uh, celebrate my honeymoon finally. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I hope you guys have a great time. Oh, and a safe will. time and, and, and make it back. Christmas markets, uh, lots of art galleries, lots of beer. That's, that's Take lots of that's, pictures. Well, we can't in the the art galleries. That's okay. that's not allowed. I want to see <laughs> snow capped cottages. You're probably not going to get that because because uh, it it's almost kind of the same parallel as us. Okay. So the the temperature is not as uh, uh, it doesn't get as drastic. It's okay. it's supposed to be like between the low 30s and the, the high 40s, kind of like it is here today. Oh, okay, cool. And and it doesn't look like there's any winter weather. So okay. there may be something out you can see on the train. You can see the snow outside, but in the city, it's probably too warm with all the people. So okay, cool. Sad, but Still, it is. Take pictures. Yeah. Whatever you can take, bring it back to us so we can see it. Yeah. Special bonus question: Do you guys like glue vine? Yes or no? If you've had it, yes or no? Spice. It's like a hot spiced wine. I personally think it's disgusting. <laughs> I've never had it. I, 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 I'm a beer drinker. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and cl click the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up. We would really, really appreciate that. And until next time, guys, read great comics. Leave us some fantastic comments. And we will see you in our next video. Bye-bye.